Well, hi guys, Alice Lima here again with my weekly podcast. And today I am so excited. I have Greg Addington who was on our radio show and I just didn't get enough uh, to chat with him about. So he agreed to come on the, the podcast today. He's the governmental affairs director for the Rogue Valley Association of Realtors. And he's going to bring him up to speed on all the stuff that happened in the state of Oregon legislative session that just finished. Welcome, Greg. Hi, Alice. Thanks for having me. Good to be yeah, here. this is so fun. We get to like talk about anything we want. Great. So, um, so the, the session just finished. Um, what do you want to tell us kind of like what happened this year? What a weird year. Yeah, very weird year. Um, you know, as I talked about yesterday a little bit, you, you go back to the special session in 2020, there was three special sessions. Um, you know, you had the COVID p- pandemic, you had the wildfires, uh, particularly in Southern Oregon. Um, you had rioting at the Capitol. So that was the backdrop coming into the 2021 20, um, legislative, the, the regular session, as they call it. And uh, it was very odd. It was um, completely virtual. So nobody in the building except for legislators and staff. Um, and and I actually worked that se- last session or for six months for uh Representative uh, Vicki Breeze Iverson, she's out of uh, Central Oregon, Prineville, but her district actually covers parts of, oh, Lake County, Deschutes County, Crook County, Jackson, Klamath. So she covers a lot of the the valley and, and some of some of the area here. So um, I've known her for many years. So it's fun to to go to work and help her as a chief of staff. Um, but I'm I'm not doing that anymore. I'm back doing this stuff. It did, though, provide me some insight into uh, how things work or maybe how they don't work up there. So <laughs> very, very weird not having people in the building. It's just an odd, you know, if you've ever been to the state capitol, particularly during the session, it's just there's people everywhere. When decisions are made, people have to look look other people in the eye and, and justify their decisions. And really, there was just none of that going on. So do you think that they kind of ran ran unfettered <laughs> so to speak because they didn't have an audience you know th- there was there was opportunity for public input uh, virtually but it's just so different um mm-hmm. really on every bill that i watched um anything significant people were limited to um in some cases one minute to give testimony sometimes two. Oh, that's rare. not very long no i mean you can hardly introduce yourself in a minute and um Wow. And whereas if people are sitting there in the building, they've traveled from Medford or Ashland or wherever to come testify, they're much more um, generous with, you know, giving you some time and you drove a long way to make a point. And so it was just odd that way. And they really rolled through things. And I do, you know, lobbyists get a bad name, but the fact of the matter is the lobby in Salem, uh, you know, they represent people and they help hold people accountable. And so when, when decisions are made and you're just sitting in your living room on a zoom, it's just easy to make those decisions without having to. to yeah. Really they kind of steamroll, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep, Cause so. they didn't have any, any controls. Uh, yeah. Well, and, and they did do that, didn't they? In a lot of respects. Well, in a lot of respects. Yeah. I mean, the, the, you know, the leadership in Salem is controlled by the Democrat Party. It has been for quite a while uh, in the the Senate. There's 18 uh, Democrats, 10 Republicans, two independents. The two independents are, are Republicans or, or ran as Republicans, but formed their own independent party. So and then in the House, 37 Democrats, 23 Republicans. So really the the leadership uh, the democrat party could do what they wanted to do they didn't really need to work across the aisle i will say i think they did and i think they tried uh, but their agenda was was pretty obvious and and they were pretty clear about it when they were going to deal with covid um you know the oregonians most hurt by covid uh the wildfires were on everybody's mind and, and trying to recover and deal with that equity and social justice were a big theme that was, I would say, woven into a lot of different uh, legislation, um, police reform and climate change. And the one, you know, we kind of touched on yesterday, affordable housing wasn't a stated uh, goal of leadership, but it was a big topic during the session. Um, 
but as we discussed, affordable housing means so much. It means different things to different people. I, I really, I think from a legislative perspective, it was, um, you know, sort of, you can call it workforce housing, um, making sure uh, disadvantaged folks have housing, which is completely good and worthwhile, and we should be doing those things. But, you know, we need housing at, at every level. I mean, the demand for housing, you know this, right? It's, it's crazy. And we just... We're not building enough, period, let alone specific types of housing. Well, and then the landlord laws um, make it so hard. People just don't want to own rentals anymore. And then the rents are really high. And it's I think it's just exasperating the whole situation. And, and we need housing for everybody. And yes, there's people that have been hurt by the fires. And yes, there's yeah. people that are handicapped. And yes, yes, yes. But we need to fix this for everybody. And that's the part that just kind of leaves some of us with our jaw open <laughs> because yeah. we just don't feel like it's getting addressed um, for everyone. So, right. In, in the eviction, uh, you know, the eviction moratorium, which are, has been ongoing for um, over a year now you know, there has been luckily, finally, a, a landlord compensation fund set up. But from what I hear anecdotally, it's very difficult to, I don't know that those funds have got to, to any landlords yet. There's an application process that people are going through. Meanwhile, I mean, you know, these are not, and landlords, another one that gives a dirty name, right? But these are re, people's retirements in many cases. It's, it's what they've invested their money in. It's working, it's, working people. Right. It's not all big, huge apartment complexes and some, some rich guy from out of state. It's, it's mom and pop type stuff. Yep. Yeah. And they don't get that income. They still have to pay their bills. They still have to pay their mortgage. Yeah. Bills. And that's so, a really scary place to be. Right. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. So um, there is a compensation fund. It is funded. Um, you know, I, I think it's going to money will get out there, but it's, it's sure been a slow uphill process. Whereas, the ability to, um, you know, evict people for, for not paying that's, that's gone away uh, yeah. and, and will for at least through the end of the year, probably. Yeah. And going back to the affordable housing, because Oregon has a, a program or a sub program, there's something called affordable housing, but it's really specific. And, and that term kind of gets thrown around, like you said, without being defined. And it's unfortunate that they didn't stop during the session and, and really specify what they meant by that. Well, you're right. It, um, I think in a lot of cases, it refers to homeless, you know, homelessness. And so we need affordable housing so we can get people off the streets. And again, a, a laudable effort, good re reason to do this stuff. But I, I mean, I'll just speak personally. I, I think that the homeless stuff, there are people with mental health issues that need to be taken care yes. of. Yes. Uh, yep. and, and that's a real thing. And there are people that are making a lifestyle choice to, to not have a house, to be homeless. Yes. To, because to... yes. And we used to call that like back in the day, you're probably not old enough to remember, <laughs> but you know, I had a lot of relatives down in the agricultural parts of California and that was a lifestyle. Yeah. And, and they chose that. And so I think there, there are the mentally ill that can't help themselves. They need help. Then we've got the lifestyle choosers. And then we have people that have drug problems. Right. And that's, that's a different issue to resolve, I think, um, entirely. Right. Right. So we can create all the affordable housing we want. I don't know if that didn't necessarily cleans up, you know, the, the homeless population. It, there, there's some big problems out there and we've made it really, um, I don't know, friendly to be, you know, it's, it's easy to be homeless in this state. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's sanctuary and there's, you know, people need a place to rest. People need a place to put their heads down. We get that. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we've just drifted away from sort of the uh, getting people the help they need. Uh, people need to work. <laughs> you know, you work, you, you, you buy a house, you buy them. Now that affordable housing is something we can get behind, right? Yeah. Doing those kind of things, but yeah. There was yeah. a ton of money, a ton of money thrown at um, housing, homeless, um, tenant issues. Um, the state's coffers are pretty full, much to their surprise this year. I mean, their revenue forecast came back much better than they expected. Yeah, they were all worried about it. How did that yeah. happen? Well, I think, I don't know. I mean, I, <laughs> you know, the COVID phenomenon and, and, and stimulus payments, I don't know how that affected all of, all of it, but 
there i think i read yesterday i think the kicker you know which is when there's excess revenue it comes back to the taxpayers was the largest they've ever had it'll be the largest mm-hmm. they've ever had so, how, how much how much are we getting uh I, I don't i don't have it uh i saw something that said the average oregonian will get between two and eight hundred dollars and i think it comes as a credit on your taxes a tax credit oh well okay so you might not get some crisp hundred dollar bills but yeah but you'll get a tax credit okay well they tried yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. all right well let's talk about like are there any other new bills that well so mention? i thought i would just touch on a couple yeah and again just uh for for everybody's reference i focus really with the rogue valley association and and work locally on, and help them with anything from elections to candidates to issues uh, throughout southern oregon but um, I have a history of working on um, state issues. And, and like I said, I was up there this session and I work really closely with the Oregon Association of Realtors uh-huh. uh, and their lobby team. And so that's why I'm able to go through some of this stuff. I, I just steal it from the Oregon Association and pass it on to you. So. <laughs> well, and it helps that you were there. Yeah, it, it did. Uh, so Senate Bill 765, um, if you remember in the... In, um, when COVID first came out, there was a concern. Remember we went through the whole essential worker who's essential and who's not. Yes. Oh my gosh. And they took time to write that down. So that was scary. Right. And so we went through quite an effort to make sure the realtors and the industry was essential. Uh, That happened. But what we didn't have was the ability to do remote online notary notarization. Right. And so there was a temporary rule in 2020 um, that just became permanent in the legislative session. So now you can do notarization um, remotely. Uh, That's which, awesome. How do yeah. they verify the person? Uh, you know, I don't know so much about the details. Alice, That's okay. Gonna, we'll we'll ask some of our title me. people. It, Sorry. No, it's very good. It's very good. I think, <laughs> I think there is uh, obviously identification and, and verification uh, that has to happen, but I'm not yeah. sure exactly how. Well, yay. That. that is great. Yeah, Digital. that's a good one. That's good. Um, I talked, we touched on already, but Senate Bill 278 was the one of the extensions of the eviction moratorium. Uh-huh. Uh, but the, the realtors were able to get an amendment in that that fully um, funded the landlord compensation. So it was funded 80% up to that point. They amended that and said, hey, if you're going to keep extending this, get them up to 100% um, so people don't get hurt. That's so fair. We've talked yeah. about that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Senate Bill 391 allows now um, accessory dwelling units in the rural areas. Rural residential. Yeah, it's a big one. That is huge. Yeah, so is that something we can start doing right now? I'm quizzing. Yeah, I think could. I think that's effective. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, it's either been signed or the, the the amount of time has passed. So I I think that's effective now. I mean, I think some of the planning departments may take a little while to. Get oh, this yeah, <laughs> that's right. I forgot they they get time to adopt, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. yeah did they say how big? Um, I think there's some. Uh, I wanted to say it was tied to the size of the initial dwelling, but it seems like 900 square feet is. Well, that's how it is in in the municipality in town. I think that's about what it is. Okay. Well, I can Um, do a lot with 900 square feet. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Yay. Oh, that's fabulous. Um, So they've streamlined development. A couple sessions ago was a bill that said uh, you have to allow for um, multifamily housing within single family. Yep. See, we've been uh, talking about this ever since governor Brown did that executive Mm -hmm. order, taking single family zoning into de facto multifamily zoning. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, there, there's a lot of mixed, uh, views about this. This is part of, we need to develop more housing. So let's allow for duplexes or triplexes where we have open spaces, a lot, you know, in, in city limits and things like that. Um, so how it rolls out and, you know, there's certain cities like Medford, I don't think Ashland meets the, uh, the size requirement Medford does, um, that, that has to allow this kind of thing. Right. But, uh, you know, we work with Habitat for Humanity. They, they obviously build houses. Um, they wanted to be able to do these uh, partitions in a streamlined fashion and, and provide home ownership opportunities, whether it's a duplex or whatever. So. Um, some good that comes with that. We want to make those things happen. And 
So are you saying that they shortened the time it takes to do a partition in town? I don't know. Again, I'm a little I'm a little shady on the details, but oh, what, that's I know, okay. what I know is that the um, they wanted to streamline the process to make that well, that's happen quicker. great because it yeah. can be really long, yeah. really, really long and very, very expensive. Yeah, and any of these people can go. It's called the Oregon Legislative Information System. You can look up any of these bill numbers. Good. It's OLIS, O L I S, and um, and look at some of the details on those Oregon things. Legislative Information Information system. Information yeah. System. Okay, good. Yeah, it's uh, it's a good resource. There's a, a ways to look up all kinds of things, but you can look up any of these bills. Uh, so again, that was what did I say? Uh, sent, that was Senate Bill 458. Um, you know, the one we didn't talk about yesterday was House Bill 2550. This is the love letter bill. Yeah. That that we've now said that that's Oregon's become. Well, the tell people state. what that is, because yeah, so, not everybody knows that that's like our term, the love letter. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, and so you should help me out as the real estate professional here. But a lot of times, you know, you would make an offer on a house and, and you'd work with your realtor and you might write a letter saying, this is exactly the location we want to be. My kids love it here. Um, we're looking forward to being part of the community. Here's a picture of our family, you know, and the, just kind of things to be make the transaction more personal. Um, and I, that's happened for years on and off. And, and the problem is with the, the fair housing laws, it just gets really, really tricky. And uh, almost all those things, you know, my wife and I, that's a violation of the fair housing law, my, you know, my kids, my three kids. And, and so it just uh, got to a point where, um, and I think there were some, a few bad examples from up in the Portland area where, yeah, people were rejected yeah for the or, they were rejected because mm-hmm. of who they were yep yeah yep. that so, was bad that was bad and that's so now we get a we get a law saying you can't do that and and aren't and we the only state in the union <laughs> we're the only one but but i can tell Again? you that nar is yeah national association's looking at it and um, in fact the the oregon association has been talking to a lot of the other states about you know, how and why and what. So I, I think you're going to see more of it. because it I'm really could... glad personally, because it just, it, it has to be about the offer and the money and not because you're going to love it and take care of it, or you have kids or don't have kids or whatever. It just, it, it creates a, it skews the decision-making and you just don't know why you lost the bid. Yeah. And that's yeah. not, a, that's not okay in 2021. Yeah, I I mean, we were kind of torn at first on this, but just what you just said right there, the more you think about it, and look into it. Well, because then they ask you, it's like if you're their agent and they're looking at you going, well, is it because we're this kind of a person? And it's mm-hmm. like, no, because that's against the law and not human. Right. But yeah, so now now they can't do it. Right. So good. that's out now. That's good. Um, Oh, what else? Um, House Bill 3090, uh, we, we talked about um, this is the septic system replacement funding. So there's $2 million. Um, you know, what was happening was transactions were happening and then there was inspections and there was bad septic systems. There was a recognition that these are expensive to, to fix. Um, they have a impact on the environment. So the state has created a fund. It's through the Department of Environmental Quality. And you can access that for assistance in replacing septics. But don't you think that's going to encourage people to continue to not take care of stuff? Yeah, I think what, I mean, it can. And I think there, in some cases, people don't even know they've got these failing septics a lot until the point, until the transaction occurs. Oh, right. Because they don't do inspections periodically. Right. And so, you know, the idea is let's get these things fixed and not have it hold up a transaction. Either. Yeah. And it, and it does cause environmental issues and health and safety issues. I get it. And I don't want to sound harsh. I'm sorry, but I just, you know, I would just like people to take care of their stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's, a, <laughs> it's the same with the, the old underground heat tanks, right? It's like, right. You know, right? you've got those, you know, they don't last forever. And yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, the other big things were really around the fire recovery. And mm-hmm. there was a lot of uh, one of the really controversial bills was Senate Bill 762, which was 
really a massive package of funding and policy d- to deal with wildfire. And, it, and it's, there's a lot of good things in it, um, you know, money for fire suppression, I think some thinning projects, some proactive stuff. The controversial piece came when um, Senator Golden suggested that we adopt, he didn't suggest, he put it in the bill, that we adopt um, standards that were developed in Europe for this wildland urban interface. And so basically, if you think of it as a, um, you know, an overlay, so they'll do this mapping and they'll say, well, you can't build or do anything in these areas because it's because of fire. Well, when you use this method in Oregon, it, it covers everything. <laughs> of course you know, it, 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 it really uh it it would really hinder development around the whole state particularly southern oregon and some of these um areas that aren't downtown you know you get out in the, right and i'm not even talking like out in the boonies i'm talking like right around the edge of town. <laughs> so i didn't but, realize um europe had a wildfire problem like we do you know where did I, they, where did they I get didn't that either. I don't know. Uh, I think, <laughs> I think it was, uh, I, want, I don't know. I really don't know this, but I think it was developed in Finland. I think they have a lot of, uh, oh. you know, and I think it's um, part scientific and part, you know, on the ground type, uh-huh. um, type experience. Stuff. But, yeah. But I know nothing really honestly about the development in, in Europe and you know, how much is it, is it more focused in clusters and towns or is it spread out? And, I'm going to Google it when we're done. I'm really yeah. curious. And I don't, again, I don't mean to be flip about anything. I just didn't know. And yeah. it just sounded kind of funny because it seems like we're the ones that have all the fires. We should be giving them an overlay. Yeah. Well, and it's, you know, there's a, people need to be really aware and we talked about this yesterday as well you know there's the insurance impacts of all these fires what's going to happen with people trying to rebuild and trying to um, get insurance the premiums are going through the roof i mean those things are uh having an effect but you certainly ought to be able to rebuild where you need to rebuild uh, where if you lost a home mm-hmm. uh, you should be able at a minimum to go in the same footprint you were in mm-hmm. the other thing that um, was dealt with this year and, and representative marsh was um at the forefront of some of these things was allowing flexibility on that rebuild and so if you had a an older home you got an insurance payment you know rebuild if you have to rebuild it to 2021 code you didn't get paid enough in your insurance settlement right it it, it, it costs it goes way over the board and so Um, the legislation I think went to 2008 to bring it up to a, which is a, you know, a a fair, makes it very safe, makes all the electrical and plumbing and things. And was that Pam Marsh um, involved in that? She's got some great ideas. Yeah, she was, um, she was really involved in a lot of the legislation around, around the fire issues and, and, and particularly obviously the talent Phoenix area and trying to help wherever they Mm -hmm. could with the, with what happened there. So those were some of the, I mean, okay, things that pass some of the things that people might be interested in. I just take a second and, and talk about a couple of things that didn't pass. And um, thankfully, one of them, uh, and if you're a realtor or in any other, many other lines of work, um, there was a, an effort to do away with independent contractors. So independent contractor status. So you would have you mean to like be the 1099. Employee. Yeah. So like as a, as a realtor, um, you do your own thing. Right. And, and I'm an independent contractor myself. I, I hire out and do this kind of stuff for, how did they think they could, they could do that? Well, what it is, is it's always this, um, they're all, they're after Uber and Lyft drivers. This is what it always comes down to. They want, they, they hate that they got all these folks that they're not collecting, um, probably what some people feel is enough taxes on. So they want those guys, they want Uber and Lyft to make those people employees instead of independent contractors. And so That's what happens is slope. everybody, yeah, exactly right. Everybody else gets swept up in it, like realtors, truckers, you know, I mean, you can go on and on, Hair, hairstylists, barbers. Well, and you know, that would really squish the entrepreneurial exactly. small business startup thing. It's like, I remember, because I am incorporated, which mm-hmm. is unusual for an, a, a commission only person, but once you're a new business, regardless of what industry you're in, once your new business has some legs and you're sustainable, then you can afford to incorporate and, and be a W2 or hire employees. But if you don't have that startup space, 
where you're just funding yourself. I don't know what would happen to all of our uh, creativity and our, our new technology that all starts with 1099 people. Right. I mean, I was I, exactly the same thing. I made the transition from an employee to going out on my own and doing contract work. And I can do it if I had to. Well, it's really expensive it. to incorporate. Yeah. Yeah. But then you do get some tax benefits. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> so I encourage you to look into it. <laughs> <laughs> I will. Sorry. The, the other big one, I'll just, uh, I'll end with this one. As far as the legislation is the other big one was uh, the mortgage interest deduction. We all are familiar with the MID, they call it, you know, you deduct your mortgage uh, from your taxes. And um, this has been an ongoing effort uh, by leadership and, and, and many in Portland and Salem to re remove that, get rid of it, which would obviously increase uh, revenue to the state because you wouldn't be deducting that from the your taxes. But, you know, for us, it's just a it's just a foundational element of home ownership. It's what helps build communities and get people you know, um, from renting to owning to building some wealth. I mean, it's just a, a foundational piece. And so um, the realtors put a full court press on this one. They, you know, and, and here's the advantage of being part of a, a big association. The National Association helped, the state helped locally. Really the focus was on Portland legislators, Salem legislators, Eugene, that area. Uh, and it was a huge, you know, there was a direct mail pieces, there was radio, there was phone calls, and we had a virtual realtor day at the Capitol. So people yep. got yep. tons of cards and letters sent to them. And, and because of that effort, I have no doubt, I mean, those, those bills to get rid of the mortgage interest deduction never got any traction. So. I'm always so shocked that that is on the chopping block every single time. Crazy. Yeah, it really is. Um, Cause that's buckets of money, even yeah. in a low interest rate environment. It's, it's yeah. a lot of money, lot, 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 tens of thousands of dollars. Yeah. yeah. So was Sorry. anything discussed about water farming? Well, it's, that's uh, always a big deal. And, and in fact, um, uh, Vicki, who I worked for was, uh, was on the ag and water committees. And so we paid a lot of attention to those issues. Uh, water, is uh, always talked about. Um, there's a lot of efforts for more regulation um, and more measurement, which are all good. Uh, we need to be careful with it. We need to use it according to water rights, all that kind of stuff. The frustration I think a lot of um, that I have and others have is that we we never we never sort of address the big problem, which is we don't have enough. We do not have enough water. We're growing. We're getting bigger. We're, our population's growing. That that same old water supply gets spread thinner and thinner and thinner, and and you run into conflicts, environmental conflicts with fish issues, um, well issues, uh, homeowners, uh, you know, having problems with with their wells, and then even municipal water supplies. I mean, you look at the Rogue Valley and the water coming out of. Um, uh, you know, big, big Butte Creek is where the supply for, for most of the valley comes from. Um, you know, a drought li like we were having here has an impact. I mean, so I want to see more, you know, I guess, vision about how do we develop more water supplies? How do we, how do we build storage in an environmentally friendly way? You know, we, we, we haven't built storage in 40 years in this mm -hmm. state. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so those did, any, the did they have any opinions? Did anybody oh. have any discussions about that? <laughs> oh, there's always discussions about it, but uh, you know, again, not to just point fingers at Democrats or Portland or Salem or, or or Republicans for that matter. I mean, you can point them anywhere. I just don't think people in Portland and legislators that come from the Portland urban area. It's just, it's not that they're against Southern Oregon or Eastern Oregon. It's, it's not really that way. It's just their focus is on so many different things, homeless, drug problems. Well, because that's um, what they house. live with. Yeah. Right. right. It's, yeah. And, and it's completely fair, but it's just so hard to get, I think, their attention on some of these because building storage or some of these other long-term ideas with water are very expensive. I mean, they're going to be very expensive. And so it's just, 
we just kind of keep kicking that can down the road. And so that's going to be, it's going to be challenging. I'm trying to think of what, you know, I mean, there's a lot of, um, a, a lot of ag issues. They've, um, you know, always issues with predator control and what to do with that. I mean, these are things that are difficult, you know, predators, and predators aren't just, you know, wolves or bears or, or mountain lions. It could be beaver. Um, they they destroy crops, right? They destroy trees. They destroy. You don't so, think of it that way, though. <laughs> I know. I know. And so. Um, That's good to know. People think that beavers are nice and friendly and, and so that we shouldn't, we shouldn't, you know, trap or reduce their populations. That's hard mm-hmm. in the ag and forestry world. Uh, you know, how do we, how do we do that? So those kind of conflicts, again, uh, people that live in the more urban areas, you know, they're not thinking about crops being destroyed. They're thinking about beavers or the state, <laughs> you know, the yeah. state animal. So. It really is perspective and it'd be nice if we all kept each other in mind. Yeah. Um, so, cause we probably forget about the problems that Portland has, although they remind us a lot. <laughs> I, I agree with you. I actually uh, work with a lot of agriculture people and farm um, forestry folks and we get very mad that that we you know Portland doesn't understand our issues and I always say make sure you understand theirs you know yeah yeah because it does go both ways but we just yeah I don't know I just always feel like Southern Oregon is the you know the little brother or the little sister that kind of gets thumped on (laughs) I don't know if anybody else grew up in a family like that but it's just like we just don't seem to get um, our voice is heard quite, quite to the volume that the bigger cities do, but, um, yeah. but it's so good that you got to be there and got to document all this for us. <laughs> well, like I say, it was, um, it was eye opening. I've been around the process a lot. I I've lobbied in Salem. I've worked on, you know, government issues for a long time, but I never worked in the building as a, as a staff person. And, mm-hmm. um, I, I loved, I loved my boss. I loved who I worked for, but uh, boy, that's just a, it's a grueling process. I'm, so, I'm, so what I'm, was your biggest surprise? Um, you know, day to day, you know, I think everybody thinks it's so partisan, which it is when it comes down to a lot of the big issues, but there's a ton, I mean, they passed um, thousands of bills. And they're not all by, you know, they're not all on party lines. There's a lot mm-hmm. of bills that people work together on to collaborate. It's, it's just these big ticket ones that you, see, you know, the ones that are in the headlines where you see the sort of the partisanship. So, you know, it, what, it, that was um, interesting to me. I don't know if I was surprised by it, but, uh, you know, people are very friendly up until a certain point. And then the, those things happen in the media about, you know, the Republicans did this or the Democrats did that. And you, you see those, but walking in, in the building every day, you don't really, you don't really see that. Um, I was, I guess, surprised at, um, you know, it's a citizen legislature. These are very, very complicated issues that people, uh, I think in most respects are really trying to do the right thing. They have different ideas about how to do it. That really becomes clear to you when you when you see the hearings day in and day out, and you see the. I'm trying to remember. I want to say there's five thousand bills introduced. Wow. Yeah, I I would have to look that up, but it's a big it's a big number. Dang. And that was very surprising to me. And so obviously you don't get through all those, but I was surprised. I'll tell you one thing. I was surprised at the kind of the 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 bills that didn't get a hearing. You know that didn't go anywhere that people thought were good ideas like uh legalizing prostitution in oregon that was a that was a piece of legislation that was that was introduced. on that wow i didn't know yeah um using w- private property in if the governor declares emergency um the state can just go onto any private property and use it that was a bill that somebody thought wow, was a good idea. wow that's alarming yeah <laughs> Taxing the PPP loans, right? The whole point oh, of those. Oh gosh, the whole, no! I, I mean, didn't know that. Oh. Yeah. Um, oh boy. There was a bill to basically ban um, fairs and rodeos, anything with animals. Animal <laughs> oh. Animals. You know, so it's like, no, those didn't go anywhere. But somebody thought it was a good idea. That was wow. So did they make it to the like? Did it get talked about or did it get killed early? 
early. They got oh, okay. I don't think they had hearings on any uh-huh. of those. Yeah. How interesting. I am surprised at that list, Greg. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And if I was really thorough, I bet you I could give you a lot more. I mean, I'm, I'm going off the cuff here, but yeah, yeah well, we're going to, we're going to talk to you more often. So, yeah, so go yeah. find that list. Cause, because I don't, I didn't know. And I think this is so great for our um, our real estate fans to, to really start to understand what's going on in Salem and that some of it is pretty cohesive and they are working together. And then there's yeah. like this weird stuff. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. And, oh. you know, I just think that I guess if I left anybody with anything, it's like legislators um, truly appreciate hearing from people. I really believe that. And, and I think particularly if you have some expertise or if you're part of a a group or a coalition. I mean, they want input um, mm-hmm. because there are so many bills. You might be an expert in, um, in, in water, but, but now you're getting all these real estate bills or, or you're getting all these bills on um, um, uh, labor unions and, you know, uh, well, I don't know, you know, or tax bills. So you, you need experts, you need people. So if you, I guess I would just encourage people to, you know, don't be afraid to reach out and talk to your elected officials because that is a great suggestion. Yeah. They really um, are looking for some ideas and some help. Mm -hmm. It's a big job. Yeah. Yeah. And we could do that. We could give them our opinion. (laughs) So, well, do it, do it, do it in a nice way, but give them. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Don't be demeaning. There's no, no reason for that. And America is built on, you know, honest debate and understanding other people's points of view. And it's okay to have a point of view. Yeah. Right. So that's right. (laughs) It's not that way all over the world. No. So we're lucky that way. So Greg Addington, governor, governmental affairs director, Rogue Valley Association of Realtors. This was amazing. Thank you so super much for doing our um, podcast. Happy to do it, Alice. Thanks for having me. Okay. So we're going to hit you up again. All right. I'll be ready. Okay. Thanks. Have Thanks. a beautiful day. All right. Bye. Bye now.